All right, in this lesson, we're going to have a look at some of the new features of the character controls window. Now, you'll notice a few things right as we get started here. One, we've already brought a character in. This is the new ninja character uh, modeled by William Proton Vaughn. So kudos to him on a great model. Also, you're going to notice that we've customized the UI a little bit. We've just generally optimized it for what we're going to demonstrate. So we've made a really nice big viewer. The character controls window is nice and big with easy access. We've got our asset browser and scene browser right here where we can see them. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'll do is select our ninja from our character controls window, and we'll notice some new things right off the bat. Firstly, we've got these three buttons here across the top for body, hands, and feet. Some of our effectors have some different colors in them, so maybe a little curious about what that's all about. We also have a new slider here across the bottom. We originally had just reach, T, and R. Now we have pull as well. So let's go over these and see what they all do. I'll start up here with the hands and feet buttons. Let's come in here and have a look at this. We'll just zoom in here on the hand. In fact, just to make things a little cleaner, I'll select this wrist effector and press the F key in my viewport to focus on it. So now we're just focused right here on the hand itself. Now if I click on the hands button, look at this. We get a new character selection window with effectors that are set only for the hands. So let's say maybe I select the index finger and I get my translation tool out. Look at this. Ah, uh, very nice. Individual IK solving for the fingers. Very natural looking too. I can grab all the fingers if I want to, move them all at one time, and scratch oh, something. Oh, that's pretty cool. You actually have the same amount of control on fingers as you do with the body. Absolutely. So this is a, a great new system. I mean, the inside of Motion Builder 4, what did you have to do? You had to go in and grab individual knuckles and rotate them and animate them using only FK or hand poses. But still, that was uh, that could be a bit tedious if you're having to do everything by hand. No more. Now, if you want to, you have individual IK control to make your character grab an object, maybe type on a keyboard. Any kind of intricate animation uh, with the hands can be done very easily with this new system. Fast and efficient. Now, there is one thing I do want to demonstrate, though, that uh, is really cool. It doesn't really have anything to do with this window, but uh, the first time you see it, it will freak you out. So if you're not sitting down, and I imagine most of you are, you might want to get that way kind of quick. I highly recommend it. I'm going to grab this hand and pull it down here close to the floor. And I'll press F again just to focus up on the model, or the effector, if you will. And now watch this. Let me rotate the hand up just a little bit. And as I pull this hand down, look. Oh, wow. Individual finger solving for floor contact. That's insane. Even the thumb. Look at this. If I rotate around here to a, a front-like view, watch. The palm rotates, and the fingers actually splay out. That is too cool. And it's all automatic. I don't even want to think about the effort it would take to make this rotation look perfect if you were using FK. And here, it's all automatic. I mean, a single motion, boom, everything's all set. It's just incredible. So, had to demonstrate that, had to show that off. So, let me go ahead and undo to stand our character back upright again. So, there's the hands control window. Now, next to that, we also have feet. And I'm not really going to get much of a chance to demonstrate that. As you can see, our character doesn't really have individual toes. He's, he's wearing shoes. But if you had a character with bare feet or maybe a quadruped, such as an animal, and they had individual toes on their rig, this is where you would access those toes, and the controls would be very similar to what you just saw with the fingers. You'd have individual IK solution for each one of them. So very cool new control systems for really getting in there and controlling you know, tiny aspects of your character quickly and easily. So from here, let's jump back to the body controls. Let's have a look at these various effector cells. We'll notice that some of these are colored in, some are green, some are half red. What is this all about? To explain this, I've got to actually jump down here to our reach and pull sliders. Now, reach, T, and R are familiar. Those were available inside of Motion Builder 4 uh, all the way up to this version. But let me go ahead and demonstrate them just kind of as a quick recap. Let's zoom in here, and we'll show the FK and the IK rig. And let me set my keying mode to selection. Also, let me take my reach T and my pull, and we'll pull those down to zero for now. Now, if I take my FK effector, 
And let's just rotate that up. We will notice the arm comes completely with us, but the IK effector is left behind. Now if I grab this wrist effector, and I take its reach T and slide it up to 100%, I'm blending the arm in between FK and IK. I can also blend rotation as well with reach R, so as I blend all the way up to reach T, so now I'm, uh, I'm sorry, zero for reach T, so I'm all the way up to FK, I can now reach back to the rotation of my IK, and it's a great way to get customized control over how your character is moving, because not only can you animate these rigs, but you can animate these sliders too, and really get nice, clean, smooth blending in between the two. So what's pull all about? Well, to demonstrate pull, let me set my reach uh, T all the way up to 100%. We don't really need reach R right now. I'll set my keying mode back to full body, and let me just move this effector, and that'll snap down my, uh, my FK rig back into place. Let's have a look at exactly what pull can do. Before I do that, let's set reach down to zero on this effector, and then reach and pull to zero over here on the right arm as well. Also, let me go ahead and hide the rigs. We don't necessarily need to see them right this minute. Let's select our hips, and I'm just going to slide these back and forth. And you'll notice the wrists are just kind of coming along with us. Now, I want to make edits to the reach and pull for each one of the uh, two wrist effectors, but before I can do that, I've got to switch off the reach and stiffness overrides. These are on by default, and it can be a little bit confusing if, uh, if you leave them on because you won't notice much of a difference as you change your reach and your pull as long as you're in full body mode. So just once again, if you are in full body mode, make sure you deactivate reach uh, override and stiffness override before you try to play with this. Now I'm going to come in here and select my wrist effector, and I'll take reach T and set it all the way up to 100%. Now if I take my hips and translate them again, you'll notice the arm is trying to stay behind. So kind of like effector pinning in version 4. Exactly. In fact, this is behaving almost identical to effector pinning back in version 4. Now, pinning has been changed in version 5, and I'll get to that here in a minute. Don't jump ahead. I'm trying not to. No, that's okay. It's perfectly all right. It's a very good example. With reach set to 100%, it is a lot like effector pinning back in 4. The arm itself, the specific body part, is trying to maintain its original location, but the rest of the body is moving just the same. It's not having any influence whatsoever. This is where pull comes into play. Pull is going to control the amount of influence that a specific effector has over the rest of the rig. That's a mouthful. All that to say this. If I set pull up to 100% and I try to move the hips... Look at this. Uh, the whole body tries to rotate towards it. Exactly. Well, essentially the entire rig itself is moving to try to help maintain that reach. So let me go ahead, maybe to make it a little bit clearer, let's try a slightly different example. Really what we just saw is this with a uh, pull set to 100%, we're having, this effector is having a great deal of influence over the rest of the rig. And we can see that because the rest of the rig is rotating to try to accommodate that motion. But let's make a slightly different example to really drive the point home. Let me switch off pull, and I'm going to set reach to something close to 50%. And from a top view, or something close to a top view, I will drag the hips forward and back. And you'll notice that the left arm is kind of trying to stay behind, sort of a damping effect, if you will. It's not exactly coming along with us for the ride, nor is it really trying to stay in its original location it's getting 50% of its reach back toward its original position. So now, with that done, let me take my pull and set that to 50% as well. You'll notice something kind of interesting here. Our little red bar is only filling up to half of what the reach is. So we're only getting 50% of the reach. Now, watch the rig's behavior as I move the hips. Originally, just uh, I, I keep jumping back and forth. Originally, this is what we had. I'll show it in this view as well. The arm is reaching but the hips and the chest are not really changing their, uh, their motion at all. They're not accommodating to this motion at all. Now if I come over here and I bring up my pull, watch what happens when I drag the hips around. Uh. Our entire rig is rotating because of the effect that this one effector has over the rig. So this, this one effector has a great deal of influence over the rig itself. 
So just real quick, watch this. He rotates back as I keep dragging. Watch his right hand. Oh, it actually breaks his fall. It actually breaks his fall. It's kind of an incidental thing. We noticed that by accident, but kind of a neat thing all the same time. So there's what pull is doing. It's going to control the influence that an effector can have over your rig. So with that out of the way, let's have a quick look at pinning, because I said I would. But in order to access pinning, you'll notice it's grayed out right now. We have to reactivate reach and stiffness overrides, because essentially that's what effector pinning is going to be doing. Now, let me set these back to zero right now. And just to, as a quick recap, here's what we get if our effector pinning is zero. Our wrists are just coming right along with us as we move back and forth. That's a neat maneuver. I wish I could do that. Anyway, let me go ahead and take... Oops, excuse me. need to select the wrist effector here. And I'm going to set its pinning... Or I'm going to pin its translation. So I'm clicking T. We have T and R. T for translation, R for rotation. Now watch the difference here. If I take this uh, the hips again and move them, the wrist is staying right, locked cool. in place. Now this is unlike version 4 where uh, originally you would get to the extent of the arm and the wrist would start to slide with you. That is no more. As you move this, that wrist stays pinned in place. It's, li it's as if it were nailed into that spot in space. So a uh, very cool new way that they've cleaned up the, the pinning. Also we can pin rotation as well. So if I uh, click on R here, you'll notice T and R are visible here inside of our cell. As I move my hips, look at this, the hand is not rotating at all. Now, just uh, as a way to show you the difference between the two, let me come in here and I'll only set up translation pinning on the right hand. And then as I slide this around, look at this. The right hand is rotating. The left hand is not. So you can see how pinning is really, it's a nice powerful way if you need to lock your character, any part of your character's body into a single position. Maybe uh, if he were doing push-ups on the floor, something like that. Right. We could just uh, put his hands on the floor. We've already seen how we can just pull them down onto the floor. They'll automatically splay out for us. Set up some quick translation and rotation pinning, and then just uh, translate his hips up and down, and he's all automatically doing push-ups. Quick and easy. So it's, it's just amazing how much simpler the control has become. Now, there is one more thing I want to demonstrate before I draw this lesson to a close, and it's something that a lot of folks have been anticipating inside of Motion Builder 5, and that, well, to, in order to bring it up, I'm going to start a new scene rather than try to delete out this character. Let's go to File, New. That is the new quadruped. So here under Characters, I've got the cat skeleton. And for an example, I'm going to bring in its stance to rest pose animation. And here it comes. It's thinking. So, quadruped, four-legged animals. Nice. No longer do you have to worry about how to rig up, uh, what, horses, cats, dogs, or any other kind of four-legged creature that your brain can come up with, and I know mine can come up with a lot right on the fly, including bingo. No, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I call Joel bingo from time to time. Those of you who uh, pay attention to the VTMs or have heard him before, you're probably aware of that. I will call him bingo throughout this lesson at some point or another, so get used to it now. The, we won't really go into why. Not on this video. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> you, <laughs> you can hear all about that in other videos. So just uh, getting back on topic here, we've got our quadruped. And you see, it's a, it's a four-legged creature. Let's go ahead and select it inside of our character controls. Now, the character controls is identical to what we've already seen. As a matter of fact, the only, well, not, maybe not the only difference, but the biggest difference in between a quadruped versus a biped is their stance pose. And I brought in the animation for this character that takes it over into its stance pose. This is a quadruped's natural stance. Now, with a, a standard character, remember, they come in in their T stance. Right. This, essentially, is a quadruped's T stance. So then we'll come back here to where this is... Uh, been updated a little bit, but the front paws, if you will, are going to be the hands, so we can move those around. He's about to use the litter box, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we can move the hips around, so maybe he's about to pounce. So, some, you know, some cool-looking uh, stuff here. Yeah, definitely. And take the head and pull it around. Ooh, <laughs> looking around. Like, hey, how's it going? So <laughs> we can, you know, we have a lot of easy control, just as easy as moving a biped around. I mean, there's no problem here in animating this to do whatever we need to do. So really, 
that's everything I wanted to cover in this lesson. We saw a bunch of great new things with the character controls window. So uh, just as a, a quick recap, we saw the body, the hands and feet buttons, which you'll notice here uh, inside of this, uh, for this specific character, he has individual uh, toe controls, so we can select individual toes just to kind of show that, because we didn't really get to see it on the last character who was wearing shoes. Uh, we've seen the new pinning system, where pinning actually now locks our character's body parts in space. We don't have to worry about them uh, coming along this by accident. And we saw the new pull feature, which controls the amount of influence that an effector will have over the rest of the rig. Finally, we took a look at the quadruped, which is a fabulous new addition. I mean, uh, personally, I can't wait to start modeling out some of these uh, some of these great four-legged creatures that I've been sketching out and things like that, just so I can get them in here and start animating them. Definitely. So, with that, I guess we'll go ahead and say goodbye to everybody. So, thanks a lot, everyone.